first talk will be from Andrea Tosato on HVDC loss factors in the Nordic power market. Andrea has received a master's degree in uh, electrical engineering from KTH in Sweden and a second master's degree from uh, Grenoble in France. And he's currently a PhD student at the Center for Electric Power and Energy uh, at the Department of Electrical Engineering in DTU in Denmark. And um, Andrea, the floor is yours. Thank you. So let me share. Can you all see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrea Tosato. I'm from the Technical University of Denmark. And today I'm going to present HVD loss factors in the Nordic power market. So the rationale behind this analysis is that HVDC interconnectors uh, are usually way longer than AC ones because of their technical properties. And for this reason, the losses that are generated by these long interconnectors uh, is non negligible so currently in the market clearing uh, process, losses are not considered at all. And this is a problem, especially in those hours of operation with zero price difference, when the, the cost of losses must be borne by a local transmission system operator. So here on the, on the right in the table, I, uh, I show the hours of operation with zero price difference for five Nordic interconnectors, the one that showed on the left and the uh, corresponding cost of, of losses. In 2017, the total cost of losses was 12 million only during these um, hours of zero uh, price difference. While in 2018, this increased to 18 million, showing the entity of, of the problem. So uh, in the current uh, practice, losses are not considered in the market clearing and the, the price of electricity consists of two components, the cost of energy and the cost of congestion. So in a situation where there is no congestion, then we have equal prices uh, across the zones. And uh, if we have congestion, then this means that we need to dispatch more expensive generators in some of the areas. So this will increase the price in, in, this, uh, in these areas and uh, uh, there will be thus a price difference. So the, the Nordic TSOs have uh, recently proposed to introduce uh, linear loss factors for HVDC interconnectors adding a third component to the cost of losses that is to the price of electricity that is the cost of losses so in a situation where uh, we do not have congestion and thus have prices if we have a, um, a loss factor then uh, the the price of in this case zone b that is the importer would be increased by the marginal cost of losses so if for example we have a loss factor of, that is two percent then the price will be two percent higher in a situation where we have a congestion uh, and uh, if the price difference is greater than the marginal cost of losses, then there would be no impact on prices. While if this is still too, too little to cover the marginal cost of losses, then uh, the, like, the component of, uh, uh, of losses would uh, like, take the lead. So uh, the way TSO uh, and the losses is the following. They first estimate losses before market operation. And then uh, they place price, price independent bids in, in the day ahead market. And if there is any mismatch between uh, the forecast values and the estimate, then uh, this is covered in the, in the balancing market. This is done because usually uh, the, the prices in the day ahead market are lower than uh, the regulating power prices. And thus, this uh, leads to less, uh, uh, less costs. For HVDC interconnectors, this, this is pretty much the same. The only difference is that uh, these lines are usually co-owned by the transmission system operators that are um, operating the, the, the connected systems. And thus, there are bilateral agreements between the different parties. So, for example, for Contec, that is the, the interconnector between East Denmark and Germany, losses are uh, purchased in, in Denmark, where prices are usually lower. And then the, the German TSO financially compensate Energinet, the Danish one, uh, for out of the losses. So with the proposition uh, of the Nordic TSOs, then losses would not be longer uh, estimated uh, before market operation, but they would be calculated while clearing the market. So who um, creates losses then uh, pay for them? If uh, this calculation is exact, then uh, the result is that society pay less because uh, we have less uh, losses. If this calculation is not uh, exact, then we might um, procure extra power that is uh, not necessary. So 
the, the talk today will focus on, on two aspects. First, are linear loss factors a good uh, representation of the quadratic loss functions? Second, uh, are HVDC loss factor a good enough solution or shall we consider also AC loss? So in order to uh, make this analysis, um, uh, we have created a, a test case representing the Nordic system, including all the generating units from Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Denmark, and uh, the actual wind profile, uh, solar and low profiles uh, from Norway. Um, then in order to create the market model, uh, the different uh, classes corresponding to a zone uh, have been aggregated, and then the actual transfer capacity from Nordpool uh, have been considered. So uh, this, the, the, the simulation will focus on four uh, intranordic HVDC line, Fanuscan, Skagerrak, uh, Contiscan, and Storbelt. And there will be two analyses. One is linear versus piece, two so linear loss factors. And the second is HVDC only versus AC plus HVDC. So uh, the current market clearing algorithm uh, in the Nordic system is based on available transmission capacity meaning that it's not flow-based, so the uh, flows are uh, intended to be only uh, bilateral exchanges between countries and there is no physical meaning. And uh, here on the right, there is like a sketch of uh, like a very simplified version of the uh, market algorithm. So the goal is to minimize the cost of generation subject to generator uh, constraints, flow um, transmission line constraints, and then the zonal power balance equation, which uh, then defines the uh, the, the prices. So if we include losses, then uh, we do it by mean of linear approximation. So we calculate losses uh, using this equation here, uh, using the linear coefficients that are the so-called loss factors. But we must make sure that the flow, that uh, the variable that we multiply is positive. So the flows are defined as the difference of two non-negative uh, variables that can be non-zero once at a time. And this is achieved by means of uh, binary variables. If uh, then losses are included uh, using uh, matrix dis and loss distribution matrices. So if we then have a piecewise linear loss factor, uh, the concept is pretty much the same. The, the difference is that now the capacity of the lines is divided into several segments. And we have one uh, variable uh, for the flow and one binary variable for each segment. And then the losses are calculated using the, uh, the loss factors corresponding to the segment of this activity. So the first analysis um, is about linear versus piecewise linear. And the rationale behind it is that losses are nonlinear, are quadratic function of the current or the power flowing through the line. And so if, um, if we have loss factors that don't, do not really represent the quadratic um, natural of losses, then we might unfairly penalize one HVDC line over the other. Um, and this is the case of uh, when we have parallel AC, HVDC paths. Uh, for example, in uh, UK1, West Denmark is connected to the rest of Scandinavia only through um, HVDC lines. And if we want to, trans to transfer power from DK1 to the rest of Scandinavia, then the solver will have to decide which line to use. So these are the um, corresponding loss functions. Uh, first of all, you can see that uh, piecewise loss factors are a better representation of the quadratic uh, functions. And second, if we have to transfer a certain amount of power, if we have linear loss factors, then the solver will start utilizing the line, which has the smallest slope, and it will do it until uh, the capacity is reached. And then it will move to the second one and then to the third one. Well, if we have piecewise uh, loss factor, then it will start with the first segment, then you will see, okay, what is the next? This one, is it the, the one with the second smallest slope or can I do better? And then if this is not the case, then it will uh, re start redirecting some of the power through uh, towards other lines, and so on and so on, until the total uh, amount of power that you transfer is reached. So in, the, in, in our analysis, I'm, I'm comparing the... Um, uh, a, a, mo a model without the loss factors, that is the reference, and then uh, a model with linear loss factors and uh, with piecewise linear loss factors. And as you can see, and, and the focus is only on HVDC losses. As you can see, losses with piecewise linear loss factors are further decreased. And this is because uh, we have a better distribution of the lines and a better representation of losses. If we then look at the cost savings, we can see that we can um, 
save up to 30% more using piecewise linear loss factor. So the recommendation is to use piecewise linear loss factor. Then the second analysis uh, realized, I mean, is, is similar. So what happens if we have a parallel AC and HVDC path? This is the case, for example, of uh, Fanoscan, uh, the HVDC interconnector connecting Sweden to Finland. If uh, the solver uh, see that there are losses generated on these interconnectors while we do not consider AC losses, then it will uh, always redirect the power through the AC line if there is enough capacity. And uh, we would generate even more loss if, uh, losses than uh, by using the HVDC interconnector. So if we look at the, the results of, of this analysis here, now I'm also including AC losses in the uh, calculations. And as you can see, with only HVDC loss factors, we decrease a, a HVDC losses, but we increase AC ones. Well, this is not the case if we have both AC and HVDC loss factors. If we look at the cost savings, okay, with both AC and HVDC loss factors, we have a lot of cost savings, but what happens is that we have negative cost savings with only HVDC loss factors, and this uh, is not correlated to the fact that losses are decreasing. So if we look at the at linear loss functions, and then, for example, we consider that there is a 40% line loading, then this is the amount of losses that is generated, while this is what the solver sees. So this means that there is extra power that must be procured uh, in the market, and this would result you know, on extra cost. Well, if we have piecewise loss factors, this does not happen. And uh, as you can see here, now we have positive uh, cost savings, really reflecting the reduction of losses. But uh, only with AC and HVDC loss factor, we can minimize losses up to 12%, resulting in cost savings of almost 5 million euros. So the recommendation in this case is to include AC, uh, AC loss factors as well. So to wrap up, um, today I've presented an analysis uh, regarding the, the proposition of Nordic TSOs of introducing uh, linear loss factors for HVDC interconnectors. And uh, as the, the result of our simulation show, there, are, there is room for improvement in two directions. First, by including piecewise loss factors that would lead to a better representation of the quadratic loss functions and also to a better distribution of the, of the power flows. And uh, second, by including also AC losses. Uh, by doing so, we really minimize losses and we maximize the cost savings. So this is it. Thank you for, uh, for the attention. Thank you, Andrea. Um, do we have any questions for our speaker? Uh, you can send questions over the Q and A. Um, unless I'm mistaken, I'm not seeing any questions, but I can maybe start with one. Yes. Um, so actually, we did have one uh, one question coming in, which is pretty similar to what I had in mind. The, the question is. Uh, uh, from Colin McLaver, and it's how are AC loss factors determined? So uh, right now we are considering loss factors only for interconnectors. So we do not consider uh, intrazonal losses. So it's very similar to what, uh, what is done for HVDC loss factors. You just take the quadratic function and then you linearize it around, I don't know, a certain point, or you have a piecewise. Uh, this wise function. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Um, we have a question by Zhao Yiman. Uh, how is the accuracy of the piecewise loss approximation assessed? So, uh, I have Actually, the precise, question, the precise question is how is the accuracy of the piecewise loss approximation? Uh, that, that could be interpreted as how do you assess it or how do you, if you have a quantitative idea of how far you are from. So I'm actually, I can show this graph here. Maybe I need to change. New share, okay. So here you can see, can you see the, the screen now? Uh, yes. So this is the, the error of the, the losses uh, going from linear to uh, several length of the segments for piecewise. So we understood that it's quite important to have 
instead of like a fixed amount of segments per line, then it's more important to have segments of the same size. Otherwise, you, uh, if a line has a lot of capacity and a line has like half or uh, maybe even less than that, then you will uh, have the same problem that you have if you use linear loss factors. So you don't really reflect the quadratic or better you penalize some lines over the other. So here we are comparing uh, like several sizes and this is how the error decreases. And this is the computational uh, time needed for clearing one instance of the market clearing. Um, so I think Alex Street has a follow-up question, which I think is in the same spirit. Um, so, so the question is, how do you test the actual performance of the models? Do you consider the full AC network model with all network constraints? Is the model with loss with zonal model meaningful when assessed in the full nodal model where the actual operation will take place? So, so there's okay. basically two questions, uh, I guess, uh, here. One has to do with the aggregation, the other is uh, wh whether you have an AC uh, network benchmark. Uh, no, so at the moment we only have uh, the zonal. We also have the nodal uh, network, but all the analysis were carried on on the on the zonal one. And I think, yeah, so the lo losses were just calculated uh, on the interconnectors between the different bidding zones, and this is this is pretty much the analysis. Uh, so, so you don't really. Uh... Just to be clear, do, do you actually, you don't use historical measurements, you rather, so what's your counterfactual, basically? Sorry? What is your counterfactual about, I mean, um, do, do you run an a, a, a linear approximation of an AC power flow model? It's, using? Uh, yeah, method? exactly. It's, um, this, uh, no, it's an AC uh, power flow model, but only with the reduced network. Ah, okay. And for the reduced network, you 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 have parameter estimates. Yes, we have aggregated parameters for the yeah for the for taken from the the whole network. So it's like a grid reduction. I see. Um, okay, um, maybe one last question from, from, from my side, since I don't see any other uh, coming from the Q&A, we have two more minutes. Um, in the actual market clearing model, so as far as I'm aware, in the day ahead market clearing model, there are penalties related to flows on the links in the objective function of the market clearing model, at least the day ahead uh, EU market clearing model. And here, that's not exactly how it would work, right? It's not like a plug and play. Uh, you need to maybe modify the existing day head market clearing model, or it's just you can somehow use the output of your analysis as input uh, as penalty factors in the objective function. Uh, so linear, linear penalties on the flows. What do you mean by you add terms in the objective functions? So in the existing EU day head market clearing model, we have mm -hmm. penalties, uh, linear uh, penalties on flows over links. Okay. And I'm wondering whether, because that's already kind of something that's up and running, whether you can just plug and play your solution to that, or whether you need a change, a modification in the EU day ahead market clearing model. Well, actually what you really need to do is simply, so if I go back uh, to the presentation. So you, you simply need to add the, the loss functions, right? Okay, yeah, so that could be a departure. Yeah, and then losses would be distributed using these uh, loss distribution matrices that are simply allocating half of the losses to the to connected zones. 
Yeah, I don't remember if there is explicit loss modeling in uh, Euphemia, but um, I think there is room for that. I mean, this uh, okay. that's, that's what they say. There are the, you you can do that, but I think it's uh, the loss loss factor is zero for like almost all the lines. Okay, I see. Uh, Andrea, thank you very much for your presentation.